Follow the Money Weekly presents your precious metals market update. Here's Tom Cloud. To start things off, I will be out of pocket in the next two weeks. Uh, we're going on vacation and will not be recording the show, so hopefully it won't be too much inconvenience with things a little slower in the summer than normal. But I'd like to start today with something we've talked to many of you about and uh, we'll be talking to more of you about as we've been investigating now for nearly seven months the opportunity to own gold and silver in Singapore, a trade-free, trade-free zone. We've had an attorney working on it as well as wholesalers uh, have had attorneys working on it. And let me just say at this point, I feel there it's very going over all the IRS laws, there certainly is nothing illegal about owning gold and silver offshore. It's always been the question uh, of what forms had to be filled out. Well, we received uh, earlier this week, after several months' work from the law firm, and we are now very bullish that we can uh, recommend a storage facility in Singapore to our clients, um, and then they will be responsible for setting up their own account, but then they can purchase from us here, and we can have it moved directly into their account with no charges. Uh, so this is very, very exciting. But let me go over a couple of gray areas as we're starting the process of who may and may not be interested and who wants to have an offshore uh, account of gold, and just being sure that you don't uh, misfire with the IRS by not filling out. But let me read you directly a question uh, that was posed to the IRS by the research uh, committee. Uh, it's question number 20 now on their website. It says, I directly hold precious metals for investments, such as gold in a foreign country. Do I need to report these assets on Form 8938? The IRS says no. Directly held precious metals such as gold are not specified foreign financial assets. Note, however, that gold certificates issued by a foreign person may, uh, may be a specified foreign financial asset and instrument, and you would have to report on Form 8938. If the total value of your specified foreign financial assets is greater than the reporting threshold, uh, that applies to you, which is another thing we'll send out things. So the primary thing is you can't own paper gold over there. It would be a financial instrument or classified a derivative in a trade-free zone. So you'll have to buy the physical gold and silver and pay for the storage in, in Singapore. Now, these thresholds will be uh, following up that later. And then the second gray area I want you to be thinking about is tax year you sell a precious metal uh, that you uh, to a foreign person or back to a foreign corporation, you have to report it on Form 8938. The contract with a foreign person to sell assets held for an investment is a specified foreign financial asset investment that you have to report on Form 8938 if the total value is over a specified Amount, but here's where the gray, you know, the gray area is: is you've got to. They don't say flat out, but you. It's not a, that you have to report the transaction with that institution, but you're under U.S. law when you sell it. Say you put twenty thousand dollars of gold over there, and you sold a few years later for thirty thousand. You still have a ten thousand dollar capital gain in the U.S. to report. So hopefully this is just to, to open the subject, to get you thinking, and to let you know we've made a tremendous amount of progress toward making this product um, available to our clients and those that want to own gold offshore. Uh, and we will have an ABC, uh, you know, how you set it up, and then once it's set up, we can take the order and get paid and have it moved to your account in Singapore. Uh, then we'll just go right into the other stuff. Of course, we're uh, as I record this, there's a day and a half left in the work week, so you may see some things Friday 
with a jobs report come out in the U.S. that could be under and actually be positive for gold if we had another uh, way over uh, jobs rate, and certainly gold would go down, but it could be gold good for silver because the economic pickup is silver is an industrial metal. So as the announcements come out, sometimes gold and silver don't move in the same direction. But watch that. Uh, by the time you listen to this, it probably have already have happened. But we've moved into what historically has been the two slowest months, moving from the middle of June to the middle of August. Uh, but this year uh, it could be a little different like it was last year when gold and silver both went up during, during July and then actually fell off at the end of the year. But the one thing to keep your eye on is that August 14th date when the silver fix stops and, um, and we start seeing everybody gets the report on the price of silver at the same time and no one has a 45-minute advantage to try and manipulate the market one way or the other. So this is extremely exciting. Uh, our sources in Europe are also telling us that when the news about Soros selling, and I think Jerry covered it on FTM Daily pretty thoroughly, uh, when he started liquidating his bank accounts and moving them into hard assets uh, and out of the banking system. But the rumor going around, and once again, let me say the rumor, this is not verifiable in any way, but they keep hearing October the 11th uh, to October 14th in that range, there's going to be some kind of ma major announcement or some kind of major problem coming uh, that would be real bad for the U.S. dollar. And people are speculating it's going to be an announcement by China and Russia about a potential new currency coming. As I reported last week, the Shanghai uh, exchange is already working uh, to, to have a gold fix themselves uh, and working with five independent banks that would release the information simultaneously rather than a 45-minute delay. So there are some big, big, big change things going on out there uh, that are going to affect both gold and silver uh, later. And I would say sometime around the middle of August, you want to be sure you're in. And if you're bargain hunting right now, uh, prices could go lower, they could go higher. But certainly when you're talking about a spot price on silver below 19 and below 1250 on gold, you're talking about a bargain, in my opinion. And you just have to step out there and, and know you're getting a good deal, even though it may be a few months before you see the move. Last thing to update you on um, is what's going on in the physical market. Uh, fiscal demand is up this year. We've seen new uh, increased numbers in both silver and gold uh, up on the fiscal side, and yet the derivatives are still the paper gold and silver where there's over 80 people claiming every ounce based on derivatives and people thinking they own gold. What they really own is uh, a bet against what the spot price of gold and silver is doing. They do not own gold in any form or fashion. They still own a paper investment that will be hurt when that dollar goes down, as we all know it is, and probably fairly dramatically when it does fall off the table. So a lot of things to think about this summer and plenty of time to answer, ask questions, answer questions, and be prepared. But hopefully you all as educated listeners uh, will know that 13 of the last 14 years, the last four months of the year produced over, I think, I don't have it in front of me, but over 50% of the return annually uh, on the last 14 years has come the last four months of the year. And this year I think it's going to be really outstanding, uh, even though last year was a, the first really poor year we'd had the last four months of the year. If any of you uh, have any questions, two weeks I'm gone, you can ask for Dan Scoggins, and uh, he'll be happy to answer questions in our office. We can be reached at 800-247-2812. That's 800-247-2812. And if you're interested in setting up a self-directed precious metals IRA, you can talk to Dan or Kathleen in my office at the same number, 
they'd be happy to help you on that. And lastly, if you're not getting our email blast, uh, we'd love for you to sign up. They're free, and we don't share your information with anyone. And you can sign up with that, uh, ftmdaily.com, and go to the Precious Metals button and hit it, and you can sign up. If for any reason you don't like it, you can always unsubscribe. So hopefully in two weeks when I get back, we'll be a lot closer to announcing the Singapore thing and uh, more detail on that. With this week's Precious Metals Market Update, this is Tom Cloud signing out.